on average, growth makes a difference. And so when we talk about what we're, with this, because it's kind of hard to visualize, this is a safe for daytime TV way to show you that when you start here, you can see the circle is kind of the, the circumference or the girth we're talking about. You can move up to something like this. So it's not a huge amount. These are fat cells and stem cells, which you're harvesting from the person and then injecting back into their own tissue. And, and how do, typically we take the fat from wherever they have fat, usually in the abdomen, wherever we can find it. The key is purifying this fat. We inject the fat at the, the base of the shaft of the penis with blunt cannulas, mm -hmm. uh, needles, so that we, we're not going to hit, obviously, key structures and injure them. Is there a and risk that, of a lumpy penis? Well, that was the deal <laughs> back in the day when fat transfer was not as refined as it is today. I saw some weird-looking penises. Wait, right. that's, that's I mean, I saw cauliflowers. Like the very Basically, every gesture. vegetable that... that so people were, these men but were really taking a huge these, risk just to get a, a few inches of Well, yes, and when you had that uneven, it, the, the fat would take in one part of the penis and not in the other. Right. Those were but the reason this is important to discuss is there are men out there with a micro penis. Yeah. And that is a known thing. And so if this procedure allows you to avoid that lumpy, bumpy cauliflower yes. injection result, I think it's important to acknowledge that there are some men out there where this could be a, a real life saver. scenario, yes. Yeah. I, I think, in but fact, that combination treatment that I described for somebody like that. Lengthening and, yeah, and width. Yeah, that could so be. So have you used this on people? I have, yes. And did they yes. like the result? Yeah, they have. You? They have. Today, with the way we can control it, you have to be very careful and very deliberate the way you put that fat in, in nice, even rows, because yeah. you don't want lumpiness. But but I think we also have to talk about the psychology of, of this. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting. You know, you, Dr. Travis, you brought up a micropenis. That is a penis that is erect. We're talking about an inch or two inches. A, a lot of men actually think they have a small penis, but it's actually well within the norms of average. So, you know, we know the average size of an erect penis is somewhere between 5.1 and 5.6 inches. So a lot of these men having these, these procedures, they're normal, you know, and, and if they have any type of body dysmorphic disorder, uh, I worry uh, about this for that so reason yeah. alone, yeah. which is if we get to a point where this is used for men other than those, for instance, with micro penis that truly could benefit, and you're starting to see every second or third guy going in for these, all of a sudden you get to a point where it's men trying to keep up with one another, and right. I, I could see some untoward outcomes. Well, so I, mean, I think the there, there, you do I have think to. I think it's important to point out that a different study showed that 85% of it. women are satisfied, satisfied. with so that's their partner's key, penis. Listen and that's, to the... that's really important, because even though, like you said, many of the men who perceive themselves to be small are actually average, they're five and a half inches, everything's good, it may be more of a psychological overlay you there. You sure don't want to be there... that 15%, though.